Well guys, it's Cliff again, and so I'm in a little tight spot here. Uh, I'm working on the kingpins on the 1925 Chrysler, and I found a set of kingpins uh, to a 1930 Chrysler, and they're close enough that they'll work. The pen is a little bit longer. This is the new pen, and this is the old pen on the other side. I've already done the other side. And uh, uh, the length here is no problem. And the bushings. These are the bushings that I took out of the other side. And you can see they're a little bit different in length. But that's the only problem. Of course, you once you install them, you have to hone the snot out of them to get them to work. Uh, and that takes a while to do that. But I was able to find them, which is good. I, something, I found something that I can make work, I should say. It was a 1930 Chrysler that these fit, and this is a 1925. But that's a good thing that I can make them work now as you can see you see how much play is in this thing see how it's got up and down motion well that was causing a lot of problems uh, and how this thing was driving at least I think it was but I'm gonna take care of that so I'll do a video of me taking this apart it's not really uh, complicated to get apart but since I did the other one, I sort of know what to do. Let me get some of the Gorp and Meyer off of it. Because it's pretty nasty. Let's see if I can keep my clean bench a little clean. Yeah, it's got half inch of crap on it. And I don't want to get it on the ground, so what am I going to do about that? Oh, boy. I got it. I put a box under it and collect the garbage. There you go. This will take care of that. I had a, uh, someone asked me about parts once and uh, they wanted to know where do you get all your parts from? Well, there's no one real good place. You have to be a little creative when you're fooling with a vehicle. Uh, that's uh, To get parts is not common. And something in the 25 era, unless you have a Ford or a Chevrolet, is a little off the beaten path. So you sort of have to make do with what you can find and sometimes you have to take something that doesn't have anything to do with your car and make it work uh, but it's it's a little bit of a leg work to, uh, to get the parts you need sometimes but that's all part of the fun uh, I've got a, the guys down at the parts house that I deal with, they probably hate my guts when I go in there, but they are good at what they do. Uh, they can find parts sometimes with, you go in and give them like a measurement of something. It doesn't matter what it fits. You just give them a measurement an ideal of what you want and these guys are good enough that they they can find it and they've found a lot of parts for me just that way and they and the parts didn't have anything to do with the car I was working on there's a lot of parts houses you go in if you don't know exactly what the part fits 
or if it's something just a little bit oddball, you're not going to get it. So you have to have a pretty good, pretty good bunch of guys at a parts house to do this. And uh, we we seem to have a pretty good bunch of guys. Uh, they give me a hard time, just like I give them a hard time. But that's all part of the fun of it. Oh God, this thing had trap on it from one end to the other. Damn. Well, it's not going to rust, that's for sure. I can't even get to the bolts. Yeah, it took a, a while to uh, get this thing honed on the other side. I took a made a video of it, but the daggone camera I was using was a Velcro. And instead of my phone, yeah, because I trust my phone, I figured I'd move up in the world and try a Felpro. And for some reason or another, right in the middle of the video, there go Felpro stopped. So I didn't have any idea. So I lost all the all of what I took videos of. Went ahead and put everything back together. And three days later, I went and looked and see what I was videoing. Found that I didn't have any video. About two minutes of it. Well, now it's starting to look like I can see some parts. It's got two bolts in here to lock the kingpins down. Got to get to them. There's one. Well, ain't nothing too tight on this thing. That's something. I'm going to try to, I'm going to take this one apart without taking the arms off of it. I took it all apart on the other side and cleaned it, but I don't think I need to do that. If I clean it too much, it'll look like I worked on it, and I sort of didn't want to make it look like that. I like the idea of making it look like it's never been touched. So I didn't want to clean too much because the uh, bushings are in the the uh, axle and not the spindle. The spindle doesn't do anything but hold the pin. All righty. There's the pins. It's the pins you got to knock out that holds the uh, the axle in this thing. See, it goes up against that groove right there, like that, and keeps the pin from sliding. All righty, what I do with the there it is. the other pin. Pretty simple to get out. Now let's see what the heck we got going on. Let's get rid of those. There you go. We gotta take a cap off the top. Ah, I should have, should have, let's see. There we are. This is what, like a dust cap. It's all pretty much it does. See, it's just a dust cap. And that's the top of the axle. And let's give her a, boy, that was, come out pretty easy. I guess it's because everything is so uh, worn out. Here you go. 
Let's see what the axle actually looks like. So there, it, any gross? There's some wear on it, but if you had to, or even if you really wanted to, there isn't enough wear on these uh, that would make you not want to use them again. So 90% of the problem is the uh, bushings in the axle. I mean, yeah, the uh, kingpin bushings himself. Okay, let's get that all pushed out of the way. There you go. See how that feels. Oh. He still wasn't moving in that. So that's okay. But this is the uh, bushings. Yeah, there's, it isn't horrible. The other bushings on the other side, when I took it apart, they fell out. Now, now you see that one? Now that one's worn. So that's where the wear is. So let's, uh, where's my gadgets? Not the, must be up on the bench, of course. It's getting a little warm out here in the garage. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, I think been floating around for a while. All right, let's knock these suckers out. Of course, the light is right bad place. There you go. Wasn't that tight at all? Yeah. Well, that's all it is. And then just, I got to clean up everything. And uh, I should clean up everything a little bit better than what they are. And that won't make much of a video. Nobody wants to watch you clean stuff. And it is getting. Late in the tooth. I wanted to get this done. Boy, I was uh, checking out some videos yesterday, and let me see here. There you go. Ah, uh, boy, I tell you, when you're working on stuff like this, you really get dirty. Look at that. I was clean just a second ago. But I guess that's just the way it is. But uh, I was checking out some videos yesterday. Just thumbing through uh, uh, YouTube. And there's a fellow on there that's working with steam powered motorcycles. Now I got to thinking, you know, that is cool. Uh, you know, you got people doing old cars and, and you know, restoring a lot of stuff. But can you imagine going to a motorcycle uh, meet in a steam-powered motorcycle? 
I, I think that would be a little cool. But, hey, all we can do is try to keep up, right? <laughs> we think we're doing cool stuff, and we are. But there's other people doing a lot cooler stuff. Uh, yeah, so here we are. I think I'm going to cut this video short and uh, call it a day go because I got to work tomorrow and this is the middle of the week. I just moved my days around a little bit. We're cutting a 50 foot boat up at work and uh, I'm going to try to take a couple videos of that because what we're going to do, we're going to cut the boat in three sections. We got to move it, uh, we don't want to break it up right where it sits. So we're going to move it about 150 feet around the building. Somehow, either we're going to pick it up with the big forklift heister, the pieces, and I thought, actually thought about taking the center roof off, putting it on the ground like a sled, turning it upside down, put it on the ground, sitting 20 foot of the front of the boat on it, and then pulling it, dragging it like a sled up the road around the side. Uh, I thought about this. Now, will I do this? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if the roof would stay together long enough for me to get it pulled around because I could pull it around with the backhoe. But I'll have to see. It might be more work than I really want to do tomorrow because I only got one more day this week I got to work. And then uh, my bosses will be back. And of course, that'll be the end of the videos on the boat. Because uh, I can't make any videos when they're there. They're just little, they don't like that. Uh, so, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. So, I might sneak in a video or two on that. Uh, just to know, uh, let you know how much fun I have at work. Because I love tearing boats up. As far as I'm concerned, that's all they're good for. <laughs> they either sink or burn up. Uh, and I used to love boats. But since I've had over 100 boats of all different sizes, all the way up to 68 feet, uh, then I'm a little burnt out on boats. I mean, once you do something, you know, 80% of your life, you've sort of done it all or most of it all, because I used to have a lot of antique boats. and uh, It just, the fun's gone out of it, I should say. Uh, everything's plastic, which is okay. It's definitely trouble-free, but I don't know. It just doesn't have any character that I'm interested in. But that's the way it is. Uh, life changes. Uh, I keep waiting for the day that uh, cars don't interest me. Uh, I'm sure that'll probably come up, uh, but we can only hope we can keep plodding along, but it sure is hard. I get trouble getting up and walking and a little bit of everything. So uh, here we are. I don't want to be long-winded and bore everybody. So until I get, start, get all this clean and start putting it back together, uh, then I'll see you all later. Bye now.